Hey guys, Taco Mage here once again, bringing you the final of my Mechanism version 9 Spotlight videos. Today, we're finally going to tackle the steam turbine. Now, in order to tackle the steam turbine, I thought I would start with the smallest possible steam turbine you can build. Now, you're never actually going to want to build one this small, which I will address later, but this is the smallest that you can make it, which is 5x5x5, five by five by five, which I did mention in my first Spotlight video. But the other thing that is in this one is that there's only one steam vent and there's only one superconductor. So this is, and one blade. So this is as small as you can make it. You still have to have that full layer of dispersers and the complex in there, but otherwise everything else there's just one of. And I'm going to use this kind of a demonstration of some of the lesser important information about the steam turbine. So to start here, what we want to take a look at is the GUI. Now, this is actually important information, but there's going to be the unimportant stuff I was talk talking about mixed in. Now, if we take a look here, we see that we've got our basic information right here in the first menu. You've got your production in RF, your current flow rate, your capacity in of steam in millibuckets, and the maximum flow that your turbine can handle. And as you can see, it's just pumping away. 20 millibuckets per tick is producing 28-ish RF per tick. That's all pretty self-explanatory, so I won't really jump into it too much. But let's go to this thing up here, which is your statistics. This is where things start to get a little bit more important, and we can start to dive down and break this thing apart. Now, as you can see here, we have two little sections here that are set out that have these limiting values. We've got your steam flow and your production. Now, what I had mentioned is that there is unimportant and important information. And your unimportant information is actually this top bit right here, your tank volume and your steam flow. The reason this is unimportant is that these are very, very rarely going to be a problem when building your turbine. And the reason behind that is that they are so large, specifically your tank volume 25. That is, there are 25 blocks worth of volume in this steam turbine. That volume would be more than you could ever possibly fill. And this volume is just going to go up and up and up as you build a bigger and bigger turbine. And it's kind of something that's static based on your turbine design. So since it's so large and it's kind of based on your turbine design anyway, that information is not actually all that useful. The same kind of goes for steam flow. And the reason that it's unimportant for flow is that your flow is generally going to be limited by the number of vents you have. Each vent that you put into your steam turbine is actually going to provide you 16,000 millibuckets per tick of flow. That is a lot of flow. And there is just no way you're ever going to be able to utilize more than a handful of vents, even with the reactor, which I'll show you guys later. So again, this is not terribly useful information, but I will give you some of the numbers based on them. And again, the vents, each vent produces 16,000 millibuckets per tick of flow. I'm not really sure what the vent to disperser rating or uh, uh, ratio is in order to get your vents to no longer be limiting. Uh, it's very, very high. It's about four to one, possibly five to one. But again, once you've got like five or six vents, you've got so much flow available that you might as well just say that vents are never really going to be limiting. They're not expensive. They're just a little bit of casing and some extra bits. So again, all this information up here is not important. The important information, though, is this information down here. And we are going to get into it because the numbers start to get large. But before we tackle those numbers, let's talk about this tank volume. Because again, not useful information, but I should give you the numbers. Your tank volume is actually going to be 16,000 millibuckets per block in the layer that the turbine blades are in. So unlike the boiler, this layer, the base layer, does not count. But also, like the boiler, this layer also does not count. It's only the layer in which you have steam turbines. And it also counts the block that the turbines are in. So because this layer is five by five, that's 25 blocks. That is your volume. And it's 16,000 millibuckets of steam of capacity per block. And again, not terribly important because as you build these up and you get bigger and bigger, you're just going to have so much capacity that you're never going to be able to fill one of these up. And because steam is so easy to get high throughput, you're almost never going to have any capacity in here anyway that's being utilized. So unimportant numbers. Now your important numbers are actually, again, your blades and your coils and your production because they aren't straightforward. At least they weren't 
weren't to me. And I had to do a lot of trial and error to figure out exactly what was going on here. So how does this work? Well, let's head over to this guy over here to kind of dig into how this all relates to each other. All right. So we head over here and we see that we've got production here, blades 10, coil one limiting. We've got 1.92 million RF per tick or as our max production. Now, where do all these numbers come from? All right, so you've got your blades and your coils. In order to keep these systems balanced, you have to have one coil per four blades. Because I have only one coil in this thing, it's limiting my production to what can be produced by four blades. So in order to get this thing up to snuff, I've got to add two more blades or two more coils. So let's just do that real quick. So we just grab our, our coil here. We grab a event, we put it back together. And if we check this thing out, we should now see that our blades are limiting. And our max production has also gone, gone up. And that's because the maximum production, or indeed the total production of your turbine is actually based on the number of blades in it. So when I had mentioned before that you never want to build a steam turbine this small, that's the reason. It's because one blade is the minimum possible production you can have in one of these things. But since your minimum size is going to be one coil, that means that your kind of minimum desired size is actually going to be four blades. So it's actually one level taller than this turbine. So it's going to be five by five by six with one coil and one vent. And really, it's not actually that much more expensive to make this another tie. It's like... Uh, not even a full stack of steel, a little bit of gold and a little bit of, of alloy, and I think a tiny bit of osmium. So it's not that much more expensive to build a little higher, and you will actually quadruple your power production by making it just that one level higher and then adding in three extra blades to fully utilize that coil. So again, your minimum size is actually going to be a four-bladed turbine. Now, when I say that each turbine adds more production, I mean just that. As you can see, we've actually got the same setup here. We've got one heat generator with lava on it going into thermoelectric boil boilers, each of which are producing 20 millibuckets of steam per tick. If we look in this one, we're seeing we're getting the 28 RF per tick. This one's got 10 blades now with a fully full set of coils. We are getting 285 point whatever RF per tick. That's 10 times as much, which means that our equation for what our steam per blade per tick is is actually linear. And in fact, I'll pull up the graph that I made here of it. What I did is I actually went blade by blade through this, through the first 10 and discovered that it's a linear equation. And it's got this really weird, uh, really weird multiplier. And that is for every millibucket of steam that you pump into these things per blade, so millibucket of steam per blade per tick, you're generating 1.4285 RF per tick, or approximately. It's actually a little bit higher than that. And that's a really weird number. And it took me a very, very long time to figure out what that number is related to. And after about a half hour of trying to figure out what, where the heck that seemingly arbitrary number came from using things like square root of two and all kinds of other irrational numbers, uh, I just dug into the code to figure out what it is. And it's actually related to two numbers, one of which is hard-coded and one of which is in a config file. The config file number is the maximum joules per tick production of steam. So the default there is 100. So you can at most ever produce 100 uh, joules per millibucket of steam per tick. That's your absolute maximum production. But that number is actually divided by the maximum total of blades, which is hard-coded, the maximum number of blades that you can fit in a turbine, which is that guy over there, and is 28. So in RF, it's actually 100 divided by 28 times 0 0.04, which is the joules to RF conversion. So that's where that funky number comes from. And it is linear. So as you build up and up and up and up, you get more and more and more energy production. Again, we've got our 20 millibuckets of steam per tick going into this guy, just like the other one. And that gives us 800 RF per tick, or thereabouts. There, there's a little flux in there, as you can see. But about 800 RF per tick, which is a lot off of what is essentially just a heat generator with lava on top of it. That's tremendous. But I know what you guys really, really want to see is, you know, what happens when you hook up a reactor to one of these things. So let's just come over here. We're going to knock this 
knock that out, and we're going to turn on our reactor. So here we are under our reactor. This is the lever that's going to fire our lasers to get that reactor started. So we just fire that away. Reactor turns on. That's the minimum amount to start a reactor. That's 400 mega RF. So uh, basically the reason I did that is I didn't want to have too much excess energy produced in this thing. So we've got our plasma temperature coming up as it's going. We have our fuel set to an injection rate of four, which is the maximum ejection rate, or sorry, the minimum ejection rate you can have for a water-cooled reactor. And as you can see, we've got our statistics here, injection rate four, we've got our ignition temps and all that. So that's all nominal. We're slowly heating up here, but you'll notice that we're still producing the RF for that heat up. And in fact, as we heat up, we're going to continue to produce that RF, so that can be taken off as energy. All right, so we've left the reactor on long enough that it's pretty much stabilized. We're still going up a little bit, but I mean, we're not going to get up much higher than this. And as you can see, we're producing a fair amount of steam, but we're not accumulating any water, which means we actually haven't maxed out this reactor as far as steam production. And that's impressive because I've got five full threads of water going into it and five full threads of steam coming out of it and five full threads of steam which is five ultimate mechanical pipes pumping steam into our turbine is producing 1.27 mega rf per tick that is a lot of power and again this is a fully realized turbine if we look into our statistics here we see we've got 28 blades and seven coils once again our tank volume and our vents are irrelevant because it's providing so much flow and capacity that is essentially not being used that it doesn't matter. And this size turbine, the maximum size turbine that you can build, is actually 11 by 11 by 18 tall. So that is the maximum size turbine that you can build. You could actually take the base out to 17 by 17, but all that's really doing is giving you capacity. Since it's so hard to actually fill this thing with steam, that's capacity that you don't actually need. So this is what I would call the maximum useful size turbine. And as you saw, it was producing 800 RF per tick just on a heat generator. So you could even build one of these and just run it off coal and make a tremendous amount of energy off of, say, 10 wood fuel heaters. So the other important consideration here is that you're still producing energy in your reactor. And indeed, I've got this reactor outputting energy and I've got the turbine outputting energy both into this induction matrix. And as you can see, we're producing just a little over 1.6 mega RF per tick. So that's a lot of energy. And as we can see, we haven't even maxed out this reactor in its, in its steam production. So we could add some more threads of water. We could add some more threads of steam and produce even more power. I didn't do that because it was getting a little bit ridiculous once I got to this point. I thought, you know, at this point, I've got so much energy that I don't know that there's a mod that could actually utilize this much energy. I mean, a lot of MFR miners, maybe, but that would still be utterly ridiculous. So, yeah, this is what you call the most overpowered energy build possible, I think. That's just, it's just a crazy build. And it is just wonderful. So a little bit shorter video than maybe we all expected for the turbines, but they turned out to be just elegantly simple while at the same time being complex or at least resource intensive to build. So it did make you pay for how easy they are in the end of the game. So I think that's still a good balance for the steam turbine, even though they weren't nearly as complex as I was expecting. And by that, I mean, I ended up with a lot of space left over. So that brings me to a request for you guys. I kind of want to fill up this island. So if there's anything that you want to see me do with Mechanism, a tutorial, a spotlight on some older stuff, or even just, you know, a quick little, hey, how does this block work? I never figured it out. Leave it to me in the comments and I'll see about doing it. I would really like to fill this island up with just a little bit more stuff. Otherwise, maybe I'll do it in Mechanism version 10. Who knows? I know there's a lot of Mechanism spotlights and tutorials out there, and maybe there isn't anything that still needs to be done. I don't know. Let me know in the comments, and I you know I like to have the ideas. But that's it for my Mechanism version 9 spotlights. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. It's been a blast doing this, doing this series of spotlights, and it's been a, a blast playing with Mechanism version 9. But until next time, see you guys later, and have fun out there.